Hello. Welcome to Fund or Fail, the interview show about tabletop role-playing games that are backed by people like you. Fund or Fail is part of the Indie Plus network and adheres to the standards of that community. If you love independently produced tabletop RPGs, then check us out on Google+. In Fund or Fail, I'll be bringing on a creator for a project that's currently available for funding or backing at the time of recording. This may be through Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Patreon, or many other fundraising platforms. If you're looking for a project to back, or if you're looking at this project and want a little bit more information, then you're in luck. Now, I may or may not have backed these projects. and It's my hope that this interview aids you, the viewer, with your funding decision for this project. If you have questions about this project and you're watching this Hangout on air right now, I have enabled the Q&A. If you ask a legitimate question of the creator, and once my gamut of questions are finished, and if we haven't covered that topic, I will ask him, your, uh, him or her your question. So please do get those questions in now. Now, to put the next creator to the question. Tonight's guest is Tracy Barnett of Stan Sand and Steam Productions. Tracy's current project is Iron Edda, War of Metal and Bone for Fate Core. Funding for this project ends on Sunday, February 16th, 2014 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Tracy's fourth Kickstarter project. Tracy has backed 47 other Kickstarters. Welcome to Fund or Fail, Tracy. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Great. Now, this is the first of our Fund or Fail, so I hope that you guys enjoy it, and if you have feedback um, during the Hangout or after the fact, please do let us know. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hit the questions, Tracy. Sounds good. Right, let's talk about what games you've made. What other projects have you managed before, and what was your involvement with them? Uh, the other three Kickstarters that I have run were for uh, two RPGs, School Days and One Shot, and then for a novel set in the same setting as uh, Iron Edda, War of Metal and Bone, called Iron Edda Speed's Daughter. Uh, and I have managed every aspect of the projects, top to bottom. Uh, I've run the entire thing. All right, then. Tell me about Iron Edda, War of Metal and Bone for Fate Core. Other than a super long name, what is it? Uh, it is a Norse fantasy RPG featuring uh, giant mechs and awesome stories uh, told about the people that either sort of pilot the, the, the skeletal giant mechs or uh, that have to live in this world where uh, a dwarven-based Ragnarok is... Uh, Hammering down on everybody. And why are you why are you making this thing? Because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, no, the the uh, original idea came from uh, a previous Kickstarter that I helped uh, give some content to called uh, Apotheosis Drive X, which is a mecha RPG for Fate Core. Uh, Bones of the Earth was the name of the setting, and it was an alternate setting for for that project. Fortunately, David Hill and Philomena Young, who ran that project, published under the Creative Commons license, so I was able to take that idea and flesh it out into a full-fledged game, which is what War of Metal and Bone is. Now, walk me through. I'm, I'm just a little curious, Tracy. Um, so you did the Apotheosis Drive X, then, mm -hmm. then the novelization in mm -hmm. the setting... And then yes. an RPG, is that the process? That, that yeah, that's, that, that's exactly the process. Uh, I got to do an 8,000-word version of the setting for Apotheosis Drive X. And then as I was working on the full version of the setting, which is funding right now, I realized that I needed a better window into the, into the setting itself, and I thought that a novel would be a way to do that. So I kickstarted the novel, uh, which is now in the hands of my editor and will be published in June of 2014 and used that motivation as a springboard to do War of Metal and Bone, which is slated to be published in August of 2014. Okay. All right, finish this sentence for me, Tracy. I would dig Iron Edda, blah, blah, dot, 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 because I like playing... Banner Saga. Uh, it's a new... Uh, computer RPG from Stoic Games uh, and I've not had a chance to play it yet myself but everyone when it came out because um, it was kickstarted itself um, I'm not sure how long ago but it's now out on Steam when it released everyone was like oh Tracy you need to check this out and I looked at the trailer and it, it has a lot of similar thematic elements uh, and in fact the uh, company that produced it 
uh, has seen Iron Edda, and I believe someone from there has backed it as well. So uh, if they if they believe that, I'm wor I'm willing to take their word for it. Now, Tracy, are you at all worried about uh, trouble with Candy Crush Saga as a result of this? Um. I don't think so because the last I checked, Candy Crush Saga did not feature awesome combat between giant dwarven destroyers and bone bonded skeletal giants. So I think we're good. Good answer. All right, Fate is an infinitely hackable system. What have you done to bring this setting to life? Uh, one of the things that I have done is uh, I've combined Fate Accelerated and Fate Core. Uh, because the rules, uh, mathematically speaking, work really, really well together. So Fate Core uses approaches rather than skills. So rather than fighting, you are doing something forcefully or quickly or flashily. And when you see an approach in Iron Edda, it signals scale. So things that operate at giant scale use approaches because rather than worrying about the specific thing they're doing, you worry about how they're doing what they're doing. So approach equals scale. Acro approach equals a big thing. And even beyond that, if there's a thing that goes beyond giant scale to epic scale, say like, oh, I don't know, Fenrir, the wolf whose jaws could swallow the moon, uh, Fenrir is simply a bundle of aspects that get ratings applied to him. So mathematically, the numbers stay the same across the board. You're always rolling at you know, plus two or plus three or plus five, depending on what the rating is. But the mechanical impact of uh, what happens differs based on whether you are a human at human scale using skills, at giant scale using approaches, or at epic scale where your aspects themselves are rated. Interesting. Well, let's get to the nitty gritty here. Is the book fully written? No, it is not fully written. It is currently sitting at approximately 13,000 words of the 22,000 that eventually will be will be in it. Uh, most of what needs to be added at this point in time is uh, setting information. The okay. rules are 85% complete. The other 15% is uh, tweaks and uh, stunts that I want to add that are specific to the setting for the, the various skills. And who is doing the writing, you or other people? Uh, for this book, I'm doing all the writing. Okay. And uh, has it been playtested? It has been playtested as Bones of the Earth at a number of conventions. I've also run it as uh, War of Metal and Bone, uh, the few convention opportunities that I've had since then. And I am testing it with a home group as well. Uh, anyone who backs the Kickstarter also gets access in the first update to the Kickstarter preview of the rules, which is the current draft of the 13,000 words I mentioned, and I know that there are groups out there that have been testing it as well, and there will be official playtesting and feedback that follows the completion of the Kickstarter. Who's doing the art? Uh, the art is being done by uh, a combination of people. Uh, Claudia Cangini, uh, who did the cover for Fate Core, uh, did the cover for this, as well as uh, enhancements and logo by Brian Patterson of D20 Monkey. Uh, webcomic fame. Uh -huh. And then the much of the internal art is being done by Lance McCarty, who is the artist that did the art for the video in the Kickstarter. Great. Now, how much of that art is complete? Um, only the art that has been featured in the two Kickstarter videos for both Iron Edda Speed's Daughter, the novel, and this current video for War of Metal and Bone. That's the only art that I've commissioned so far because I have those assets available to use. So once uh, Tiara Lena Gresta, my layout artist, and I work together to determine where we need more art, I'll be asking for specific pieces from Lance. And what do you expect? The, you, you said you would have this book out. The expectation is August? Yeah, that's the expectation. Okay. Do you have, you, you have a layout. Do you have an editor lined up? Very much so. Um, I'm of the firm belief that anyone who puts out a game without having an editor look over it is kind of foolish uh, because they they do they do their jobs for a reason. Editors make your words sound better, and uh, John Adamus is going to be my editor uh, for this project. He's worked on a number of different products for Evil Hat uh, as well as having worked for Margaret Weiss Productions. Uh, I, to name off all the stuff that he has done would, would be a laundry listing to the to a ridiculous degree, but uh, I trust him with my words implicitly. Now, has this uh, has the you said you've known you said you have run this at uh, several conventions? 
Uh, has this been reviewed anywhere? Uh, reviewed officially, no, because it's not finished yet. Uh, but anecdotally, I've had very good responses from people uh, who have played it at the conventions. I actually had a group at Origins uh, play with me for one session at Games on Demand on a Friday morning uh, when I was super tired and very hungover. And they enjoyed it so much that they came back to Games on Demand Saturday night and asked to continue the game. They literally had their character sheets with them. They had the map that we had created, and they wanted to continue the story. And there, I have never received higher praise for a game than that. And it's pretty great. Now, in the project, you have a laundry list of stretch goals. Now, everybody, you should check this out. When I say laundry list, I mean he has stretch goals. Tracy, you've got stretch goals all the way to 150,000. Yes, now, I do. At, at the time of this recording, the project has funded to $14,772. Mm -hmm. uh, and has four days remaining. So it appears unlikely that you'll unlo unlock many of these stretch goals. Why did you plan for so much? Um, because I would rather be prepared than not. Uh, the idea with all the stretch goals was that a lot of games uh, will release a, a, a setting or a game for multiple systems, but the only differences between the books that are released are literally just the system details. The setting itself remains unchanged. And that's always been a little bit jarring for me because, at least from my view, set, uh, different systems evoke different things from a setting. So my idea with this was that every setting book, that, or every sorry, every system book that was going to be released is a unique game that shares certain core elements between all of them. So the things that make an Iron Edda game an Iron Edda game are the uh, player-driven holdfast generation, uh, the Norse themes with Ragnarok happening, the bone-bonded gi giants and the dwarven destroyers, and the nine warrior clans that exist in the world of Midgard. Beyond that, every single author, uh, for example, um, the first stretch goal is Dungeon World. It is probably going to unlock because we're very, very close to that, and we have not yet hit that last 48-hour bump that usually happens. Uh, the Dungeon World version has those things, but it is Paul Stefko's own take on the setting. His will be similar to the setting that's presented in the Fate Core game, but he is going to pull out and tease out the, the things and ideas that mesh the best with Dungeon World. So it will literally be a different experience than playing the Fate game, rather than just a system swap. Uh, and because, uh, cost-wise, every $5,000 I could afford to do a book, I literally tapped every single person in every single system that I could get my hands on uh, because my reasoning was that if enough eyeballs got on the project and enough momentum was established, it could easily roll that high. Um, and I think that's been proven out so far because every time a, a person with a wider audience than I have has mentioned the campaign, uh, for example, uh, Kevin Culp of the Time Watch RPG, which is also funding right now, mentioned Iron Edda in his update today. And I received a bump in backers from that. It's not, again, anecdotally, a problem with anything that I'm presenting on the Kickstarter page. It is literally I'm talking to the same people because my audience is only so big. Um, so if, if there were a... That's why doing something like this is... I'm completely cool with because there may be new people who see it and talk about it because right now it's literally a problem of not having enough eyeballs on the project. All right. Now, you have uh, you have met the initial goal, so you mm -hmm. are successful in funding. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, one question I have, though, is what happens if this thing fails? If you're completely unable to deliver on the physical product uh, that is part of of the the Kickstarter, what happens then? Um, I would imagine that that would mean that nearly every other aspect of my life has fallen into complete and total disarray, and I need to be far more concerned about <laughs> the the very real things of where I'm living and how I'm making money because um, this project has sort of come through a really tumultuous time in my life to even get to the Kickstarter. Um, I take my uh, my promises to deliver on what I say I'll deliver on with the Kickstarter very, very seriously. Um, it, would, it would probably, I mean, 
from my view, and others may be more forgiving to myself than I am, it would it would mean that I would probably stop trying to develop and publish RPGs myself as as Sand and Steam Productions if I were unable to deliver on on the goals that I've set forth with this because this is what I want my future to be. Uh, this is I want to I want to be doing this full time, and if I were to fail to deliver on what is my biggest project to date, uh, it would be a major, uh, perhaps debilitating setback for me. All right. What is the best possible outcome for the uh, the time that this project has remaining? Uh, the best possible outcome is someone with major, major reach, like Will Wheaton, sees my project, backs it, and tweets about it, and then it rolls to $150,000 by Sunday. That would be sweet. <laughs> that would be the sweetest thing. All right. Well, um, let's let's real quickly give us an idea. Of what are the the sweet pledge levels? Uh, without without doing a laundry list, are there a couple of pledge levels that you'd like to highlight as we uh, kind of come to the end here? Uh, sure. The I th I think the well, I kept the pledge levels very simple. So the uh, the three that are the most uh, the most backed uh, for fifteen dollars, you get the PDF and you get the any additional PDFs that are unlocked. So if this thing were to roll into you know, all 26 books that could be unlocked through this process, you would get all 26 for 15 bucks, um, which is pretty awesome. For 35 bucks, if you're in the U.S., you get a hard cover, or sorry, a, a soft cover hard copy that would ship directly from Drive Through RPG. Uh, and for 75, you get a full color hardback limited edition Kickstarter only uh, print copy uh, that will be signed by me. So those are, and, and really, that's the extent of the of the pledge levels. There's a vanity tier where I'll come and visit you, you know, and run the game for you, but um, most people don't have a spare thousand dollars to have a game designer come visit them, so uh, but yeah, th those are the three that are seeing absolutely the most activity. Okay, great. Well, first of all, thank you again, Tracy, for coming on. Uh, again, this is Iron Edda War of Metal and Bone. Uh, for mm -hmm. Fate Core, and that is on Kickstarter. It is available until Sunday, February 16th, 2014, uh, at pretty much midnight Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick thanks I wanted to give to the Kicksnarker community on Google+, Plus, who helped me to develop the questions for Fund or Fail, as well as some of my cohorts in Indie Plus and, uh, and, and my buddy Adams. And uh, we'll end off here again. Tracy, I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your Kickstarter campaign and future endeavors. Thanks very much for having me on, Rich. I appreciate it.